maybe the furniture and the decor in your home doesn't exactly fit your ideal aesthetic and you think ah i could go buy new furniture swap things out i'm in the same boat you know i would like my furniture to be different but i also struggle with the tidiness of my place i've come to realize that the stuff is the problem not the type of furniture that i have you know modern expensive furniture would look pretty ridiculous in my rental apartment with linoleum floors hence why i'm still using this couch from 2016 struck tube i like the legs for small spaces because it's just more practical is it my favorite most comfortable couch ever absolutely not i've had the same sentiment about pairing a chanel purse with a forever 21 outfit back in the 2010s what's the modern equivalent of that wish she in so i've started decluttering and i realized that that same old furniture that i was hating on surrounded by clutter isn't really so bad and i can continue to use it until i maybe decide to upgrade things when i move into a different place for now i'm doing my best to downsize my possessions and to rearrange my life because i've found that having a tidier apartment means i'm less distracted by the junk everywhere i'm less stressed and i'm more able to focus on the systems that i have in place to accomplish my goals and to enjoy my life and not feel ashamed when someone comes over if you're new here my name is alexa and i do decluttering videos there will be a long list of them down below for you to check out if we're going to be talking about my decluttering goals basically in the same way that people talk about their low buy goals hopefully these can help inspire you to think of the ways that you would like to declutter your space in a manageable less overwhelming achievable way in the upcoming months because that's basically my plan right now since we're already here in my kitchen i obviously have a lot of decluttering to do in the cabinets i'm not going to go on and on about that that's just something i will do at a later date my plant section is where it starts to get crazy because i inherited many plants from my mom my plan is to start consolidating things like my sansevieria i would also like to consolidate my oxalis but i need to find a pot big enough for the both of them together and i'm thinking of getting a self-watering pot if you're interested in plants i will have a plant chore video coming up and a plant tour this is not the way i want to be keeping this area right now there are definitely still things that i have procrastinated on because they are just not completely in my way let me know in the comments by putting a sunglasses dude emoji if you have something that you need to declutter and you've been pushing it back, maybe comment what that item is so that you can keep yourself accountable. As mentioned in my laundry area declutter, I recently went to Ikea and purchased some bits and bobs. These right here to replace boxes that have stain marks, but I actually need to, I'm using this little flashlight, I need to figure out how to store these without wasting so much vertical space. So I think I'm gonna be moving these around. From my makeup overconsumption days, I have plenty of Alex drawers in this apartment. I decluttered my makeup collection in October 2023, but one of my goals will be to just reorganize all these drawers because they have just gotten out of control. There are a lot of spots that are underutilized and then some places that are overstuffed, some things that don't actually belong in the drawers. Once I do a little bit of decluttering here, I'm also going to be sorting through my desk bins, everything in this white shelf. Essentially, I'd like to get rid of this white shelf, but for the time being, I will actually be swapping places of this shelf with the Calax so that the Calyx is beside my Expedite desk. The plan in my mom's room for now, will be used as where I keep the clothes I need to declutter. It's not really my top priority right now because I sort of have a bit of a capsule wardrobe going in my room. So I'm using this place to deposit and to just kind of reconsider stuff. I also use it to hang my laundry in anticipation that some of that humidity will help my plants, but who knows? In this closet, there's just mostly storage and the makeup drawers that 
I'm also going to use for PR samples because it's impossible that everything's going to fit in just that Alex drawer that's in the living room. So that's the plan for now. I also take moments to just clean up bits and bobs that have gotten super dusty. I'm letting this thing dry on the rack. It's this beautiful eucalyptus reef that we've always kept in our bedrooms. You have seen my bedroom before. I have a problem, okay? The dilemma I have is I still want something that's like a viable night table, but I would like to put the snake plants here because I'm not using this window for any plants. There aren't a lot of windows in this apartment, but where there are, there is quite a bit of light. My room is the darkest apart from the bathroom and the kitchen, so I would like to keep my snake plant Sansevieria here in this corner because it's thrived here before, but in doing that, I would like to consolidate it to one pot instead of two. The goal I have for my wardrobe would be to have everything that is in season be in my bedroom, just the clothes that I use most often, and then everything that's not seasonal could fit in this dresser. Ideally, get rid of this rack or use it for a couple of hanging plants. I know that's ugly, but there was an Ikea rack that I was interested in. I've seen some people say in the comments that they used it for clothes, but you know, I've got this pole right here and I can move it around. It's on wheels that could be interesting um maybe i won't use it for that at all and i'll disassemble it and sell it i don't know it goes without saying it's a fallacy to think that storage furniture is going to solve your problem because it's so easy to hoard trust me i've been there i'm an ex-beauty guru and then i have the alex desk and it has drawers i've got the calax it's got places where I can hide things. All of these areas need to be properly thought out before you decide to just randomly place a storage piece of furniture that you will inevitably just use to stuff things into. Because I'm dealing with a very long living room, I think putting that shelf on this wall is going to help shorten the distance and give the illusion that it is wider than it is. I'm thinking the bottom is going to be enclosed and then the top I could actually use for a little bit more of a decorative purpose and it'll look more cohesive as opposed to having this mismatch here. That's just what I'm thinking and I'm also not doing it all in one shot because it would be absolutely overwhelming. I cannot know what the state of this room is going to be like until i do my declutter i don't know how much of it i will be able to declutter for instance when i went through the laundry closet i wasn't able to consolidate that much i basically just made room for things that were previously jam-packed in this really small place and i was able to take out some of the excess sometimes that's what it is, it's baby steps. And the following year when I go through those items again or in the next six months, I might feel very differently and realize, oh, I never reached for the hair dye I thought I was going to use because I am going gray <laughs> and I kept it just in case so that I wouldn't have to go out and buy more. If I don't use it, it can go, but maybe I'm not ready to let go of that right this second. I think a lot of decluttering gurus are just like, oh, if you're not gonna use it in the next three months or whatever it is, then get rid of it right away. You might impulsively buy it back later if you get rid of it before you're absolutely sure you're not gonna use it again. And I think that giving yourself that sort of gestation period, if you will, and doing things gradually is more conducive of longevity. For instance, when you're on a weight loss journey, studies have shown, and I'm not gonna like pop on studies because you have Google, you can do the research. People who lose weight really fast are more likely to gain it back after because they've not built up the routine and the sustainable habits related to keeping the weight off. Here's another example. Apparently lottery winners are very likely to spend all their money and go broke after a few years because they weren't used to having money in the first place and they get rid of it again. Maybe without even knowing how it even happened, why they loaned the money to everyone they knew, why they bought frivolous things. That is why taking things slowly, which is so underrated online, so so underrated like we live in this instant gratification culture of like short form constant consumption no 
it's not going to be that way oh you're gonna want to subscribe because next week will be plenty week i'm gonna do two plant related videos and then we'll go straight into decluttering again you know what to do subscribe like click on the video on the screen